Lord, our Heavenly Father, as we come to you to hear your word from John. Father, may he speak all words from the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for him. And Father, we pray that we as a congregation, you will speak to each and every individual person that they may hear your voice and understand it to their own living. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. For those of you who are watching on YouTube or our website, welcome. One day we hope you'd come and visit us here at the old meeting house in Norwich, which we believe is the oldest congregational church in the United Kingdom. I am the current pastor, and uh, I've been here for a few years. <laughs> I'm having to sit down because I'm still recovering from cancer, but um, <coughs> we, we do pray that God will speak to you today through this message. You know, one of the things that's on the increase today is multi-faith. And there are many religions, but I want, you to te I want you to know that the Christian faith is unique. All the other religions in the world give you philosophy and formulas that you have to follow. But the Christian religion gives you the person of Jesus Christ, who loves us as a brother who is a faithful friend. And it's about him that I want to share with you today. Isn't this a wonderful thing? That we have a God who cares for us, who even knows the numbers of hairs on our heads. In an impersonal world, we have a God of the universe who can care for someone just like me, just like you. Isn't that amazing? So I do pray that what the Lord has shared with me may be a real blessing to you today. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Those are words from Psalm 121 verses 7 and 8 you know that throughout life we may feel discouraged and down yeah anyone else like me that happens to yeah I'm talking to the right people then but we but we must always remember that he is by our side and watches over us through it all. He doesn't have a bad day. He hasn't got a day that he wanders off and leaves us, as human beings can do. The Bible tells us, do not be troubled because we have a king of kings on our side. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Going back in history, there was a lady called Sevilla Martin. Have you heard of her? She was born in 1866 in Nova Scotia, Canada. She married an evangelist, and they together travelled all over the United States conducting evangelistic crusades. She worked with him on music during those meetings. And I'm going to be talking about one of the songs that inspired her that she wrote and she, that as she visited a lady who was ill and bedridden God gave her this hit this song her friend was discouraged by her illness but remembered a God who watches over each little sparrow and she therefore believed that the same God would watch over her. The entire poem was sent to a well-known composer of that day, 
Charles Gabriel. His lovely music has carried it all around the world in small churches and great crusades. Ethel Waters is remembered for her great rendition of this song when she sang and gave testimony at many Billy Graham crusades. Anyone here been to a Billy Graham crusade? Do you remember that wonderful singing? I remember when it came to Norwich. You could hear it miles away, couldn't you? And this was one of the most favourite songs that was sung. It is from this incident that Mrs Martin thought of writing a poem about this incident. She completed it the same day. Uh, Chris, I forgot to hand these out. Could you quickly hand them out? (laughs) The Lord is with us. He holds our future and our safety in his hands. Our deliverance and safety are promised and rest assured. Nobody protects like our God. Nobody keeps like our God. Nobody preserves like our God. And nobody watches like our Lord. He, oh, Pearl needs one. He is, Chris, Pearl needs one. He is the great protector. Thanks. Has everybody got a sheet? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, at first glance, Psalm 121 and verse 7 offers tremendous assurance. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Wow. Huh? Can we say wow? That sounds wonderful. Don't we worry? How many people have burglar alarms and all kinds of things? It's a dangerous world out there. And God has, what, has promised to watch over us. The sparrow is one of the smallest birds in the world and may be considered as of no consequence to many people and could be sold cheaply. But Jesus says God still does care and notices when one of them falls to the ground. Doesn't that boggle your mind? That the God of the world cares for a sparrow. This is as per Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 to 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even... The very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. If God cares about the tiny sparrow, how much more will he care about your needs and mine? My dear friend of God, this is the message and meaning of this phrase. His eye is on the sparrow. And I'd like us to read this. I haven't had the music, unfortunately, but it it was a poem, so let's try and say it together. You've all got the words. His eye is on the sparrow, so why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Though by path he leads me, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow, I know he watches me. 
His eye is on the sparrow. I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when songs give place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him. From care he sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Do you know it? Are you living it? Does it make a difference in your life? I know he's watching me each and every day. What a difference that makes if we truly live it and believe it. Do read this when you get home. Do look it up. It's on the website. You know. Now, I recently came across this moving story by a former prison inmate in one of the American prisons. Here is what a man called Richard wrote a few years after being released. After becoming a Christian, he wanted to grow in the faith. But there were obstacles. One of the most difficult was that he feared that he might die. It was so cold. He had taken a plastic gallon jug and filled it with hot water to place between his feet just to keep them from freezing. The furnace was broken and the authorities had no in intent on fixing it until after the American Thanksgiving holiday. So he covered himself as best he could and tried to rest in the cold cells, shivering. He said that his beige, beige and grey six by nine cell had a steel cot, steel table, steel seat and one window which served only to slow the wind down, not stop it. He said that he lay there and thought about his life. He felt utterly alone. He had no contact with family and friends, had all disappeared. <coughs> Was God eluding him too? In that misery, he said, he began to question God. Was he real? And more importantly, did he love me? The only answer that came was the fog of his breathing and the cold turkey sandwich. Great thanksgiving, he mumbled to himself. He prided himself of being strong, but he was weeping in the cold. As he wept, he begged God for a sign that he really cared. He said that he had made terrible choices in the past, but he thought he had finally made a good one that day as he asked Jesus to be his Lord and Saviour. However, he even questioned that on this horrible day. As he continued to weep, he gazed at the snow-swept window and was surprised to notice a tiny sparrow crouched in the corner of the windowsill. How sorry he felt for that bird. He watched him for what seemed hours. He remembered the verse in the Bible when Jesus told of feeding the sparrows. He wondered why he allowed that little creature to suffer as he was. Then, with a solitary, misty word, he allowed the word, why, to fall 
from his lips. He had at last put a word to the million questions that ran through his idle mind on that cold, cold, in that cold, cold cell. That word seemed to bounce off the concrete wall and suddenly the whole room was bathed in sunlight. The sparrow shook himself from his slumber and began to stretch his wings. He was warming himself in the sun's rays, which invigorated him. He was in awe as I saw the shadow. He was casting on my cell wall, and then he gasped audibly. There in the cell with me was a picture-perfect form of an angel. Each time the little sparrow moved, the angel did too. It was the sign he'd been looking for, the affirmation that he was not alone, that God really, really does care for him. Then I got up from my chilly cot, shook off the self-pity, and then he wrote this wonderful poem, and I hope you like it. It's called Conversation with a Sparrow. Do you know it? Come to me, little sparrow, away from the pelting rain. Tell me of your sorrows, and I'll tell you of my pain. Come, perch upon my windowsill, and rest your weary wings, and give to me the meaning of the beautiful song you sing. Teach me how to be happy behind these concrete walls. Now give to me the reason for your early morning calls. How I'd like to soar the heavens and fly across so free. But I am here in prison, so you take wing for me. Tis God who taught you how to sing and gave you wings to fly. Tis God who sent his precious son for sinners such as I. So off you go, little sparrow, out into the pelting rain. Take with you all my sorrows and give wing to all my pain. Fly away, little sparrow, but soon come back to me. For as I watch you soar the heavens, I find I too am free. You see, God allowed him to weep with a sparrow so that he might learn to soar with eagles. Isn't that true for all of us? We may feel low, but God wants to lift us up. He wants us to be bigger, that we are important. Now, these are similar thoughts to those expressed by Mrs. Martin in 1904 whilst visiting that sick friend because she was bedridden she lamented to Mrs Martin that sometimes she got discouraged wouldn't you if you were bedridden wouldn't you if you felt hindered and hampered how many people never get out they've got no transport they've got no funds it's just like being bedridden isn't it but when she remembered that her heavenly father watched over each little sparrow, he would certainly watch over her. And he watches over your life and my life. We sang a song earlier on by Fanny Crosby, how he led her all the way, that blind lady who's, who wrote 8,000 hymns. In 2 Samuel, chapter 22, verses 3 and 4, we find these words. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, my refuge, my saviour, you save me from violence. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I'm saved from my enemies. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? 
Naaman, chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. You know, you can't make it up. How could we get such marvellous scriptures? It was the famous American, Ben Franklin, who said, God helps those who help themselves. But the scriptures teach us that God helps those who seek his help. None of us is safe until we take refuge in God. We can find, we can seek and find refuge in God. We can go to him in prayer and we can seek refuge in his word. Here's another scripture. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. This is a wonderful thing. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. In a changeable world, what a wonderful verse to find that our God never changes. In prayer, we find the refuge and comfort as we commune with the one who loves us. Do you feel loved? Finding earthly love is so difficult, isn't it? But we can have a love that never fails. We may find instruction that leads us away from danger as the Good Shepherd speaks to our hearts. The refuge we find in his word is everything we need for our lives through his promises. And when God, when we make God our refuge, we have security in him. There's no security in this world except in God. We have a refuge or a covering that is greater than anything in the world and more powerful than any enemy that can come against us. God can keep us covered. We don't need anyone else covering us when we have him covering us. People, we'll, we'll let you down, but the armour will never let us down. Let's be confident that God encircles us, taking care of us and protecting us. The more you walk with him and trust him, the stronger that armour and protection become. And that's something to rejoice about. The Lord can keep us because there's nothing this God cannot do except fail. He can't fail. He keeps his word. Banks, guarantees fail, but God's word never fails. No crises or circumstance can overwhelm him. He is never surprised or shaken. He made all things, sustains all things, and rules all things, including every detail of your life and mine. Even on the most difficult of days, no hill is too high or night too dark for him. When what we can see only screams anxiety, see the strength of his power in all he has made. Surely the God who made the mountains can keep us from stumbling and to present us blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. That's a verse in Jude chapter 1 and verse 24. When the religious leaders later threatened the apostles and warned them not to preach the gospel, can we read about this in Acts chapter 4 and verse 24, they prayed a similar prayer 
This is what it was. Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Where did the early church find the courage to keep witnessing? They began by remembering just how powerful their God was. The power they could see everywhere they looked. Look around, look closely, and know that the Lord can keep you. No weapon of man, no weapon of Satan, no danger in nature can keep God from keeping you and me. No matter what is happening in the world, we can rejoice because if the hills around us suddenly look terrifying, remember who made the hills. God has got us covered. What about an amen for that? Do we believe it? Are we living like that? What a difference it would make if we lived that each and every day. I want to finish with a prayer. And then maybe some of you may want to be prayed for. Because I believe that's a powerful word for all of us. And we may need just to open our hearts up and claim it. Because it's no good just going into our ears. It's got to go into our hearts and into every fibre of our being. That we know that God is with us. Let's just pray. Our loving creator God. We stand in awe of the work of your fingers and the breath of your spirit. From the tiniest to the largest, you have created all things. Human beings and the little sparrow are part of your miraculous handiwork. Thank you for speaking to a man in prison, to an invalid in bed, to all of us who yearn for more of you in our lives. You are watching over us, loving us, and guiding us step by step. May we be completely surrendered, as are the birds in the air. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Now, does anybody feel...